Hey, hello there. This is a tutorial of how to build a proximity falloff tool. So as you can see here, we have kind of a tree thing. And if we go here to the proximity spheres, you see these icospheres. And if I scale them, for example, or I grab them, you see that the leaves appear inside of the sphere with a certain fall off. So in this way it becomes really easy if we take a top view and we grab it and we scale it, for example, uh, to control where our leaves go or any kind of element that you want. So this way we can populate the trunk of the tree or like the branches. And also, for example, if we go to the top view and we show what we are doing, we scale it a little bit we can just command uh, or shift D to copy it. You can see we can just copy one of the spheres and like bring it down and also do the trunk on like the bottom. So this way it becomes really easy to uh, create some elements onto a model. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. So first of all, I build a little tree node. As you can see here, this is the tree. This is the nodes. Um, I made this, if I turn off the geometry nodes. I just made an icosphere and pull down one of the vertices to the floor. So I grow the tree on the icosphere. And if I go here, I set the position. So if I take a viewer node, I plug this in. Like I first offset uh, to the normal, so I put a noise texture over it. You can see the scale of the noise texture. Uh, I put it to eight. I do use a map range and go from minus uh, 0.5 to 0.5. And that's just how far it will uh, push out the vertices from the normal. So. If I do, for example, from zero to something, it pushes them out only to the outside. But if I go from uh, minus 0.5 to 0.5, it goes inside and outside. And also if I plug this in right away, like it goes into like a weird uh, X, Y, Z direction diagonal. But if I use the normal, so if I take the normal and I multiply it by the noise, then it only goes in the direction of the normal of the face and the vertices. So it pushes them outside and inside of the mesh that already exists. So that's a nice principle. So normal, plug it into a vertex. Here you can find a uh, vertex vector, vector math and then use the multiply. Then you can plug them in and it should work. So that's what I do first. Then I take the edge path and it take the last vertex. Actually, this should be flipped to make it a little bit more clear. Uh, so edge path to curve. So I make an edge path from this one to all the remaining uh, vertices. And I use a random value set to Boolean. So I can take more or less if I want to make a tree more dense or less dense. And then I take the last, I take another one. I think to one, 162 was the bottom vertex so it goes from here to all the other vertices and then when I set spline to NURBS then they become really nice and rounded and then I use a set curve radius so in uh, the beginning they are big so spline parameter uh, the factor from uh, 1 is here or 0 to 1 is the end Zero is the beginning and one is the end. And I make them go uh, from zero to 1.5. If I 
show you here what the end result is. So with a regular factor, it goes from uh, radius one to zero. But when I remap it one to uh, point one point five, I can change also the diameter. I also can go want them to end like larger. I can do that as well. So it gave me a little bit of more control of uh, how the tree looked. And also I take a curved circle. So now I have all these paths and this is the no tree. Uh, but I remeshed it. Turn this off. No, this tree. This is just this one, this one I want. This I remeshed it just to uh, get rid of a lot of geometry because actually in the node tree they are overlapping curves and I didn't want that. I just wanted to have the outer layer. So I merged them and uh, did a remesh to get this tree. And then what it's actually about, it's the proximity fall of tree. And as you can see here, like the tree comes in, if I use a viewer node again, uh, I project like all these points onto the tree. And then by uh, putting instances on them, this is the instance. So it's just, uh, it's a grid. And I subdivide the grid to make it a little bit more rounded. And then I rotate it a little bit. So it's nicely, it looks like leaves on the tree. And then I use these points and project these leaves onto them. And then this is what it's all about, the collection fall off. So if I take this, I mute it. Uh, here you can determine if we go into like, the colored mode. We can determine the fall off. So how big the fall off is. We can determine the, um, how big it goes and to how small it goes. And now the range is from one to zero, but you can adjust that yourself. And this way it takes the collection, as you can see here, collection proximity spheres. I put it back to the regular size. So it takes this collection and takes the position of the sphere and the scale of the sphere to project the scale of the elements. So this way uh, we have a lot of control over what happens, which is really nice. And if we go into the collection fall off, here you can see how I did it. So I take uh, the icosphere, I make it again myself. Uh, I capture the position, uh, I extrude the mesh, uh, scale the elements, and then here with the viewer node, you can see what happens. So this is actually when I turn this one off and go into this mode. I need um, for the geometry proximity, I need like all these inner vertices as well or the edges. So this sphere is filled. So it knows that it should, uh, uh, when it's close to an edge or a vertex, it should do something to the instances, make them uh, bigger or smaller. If I wouldn't do this, then only at the edge of the sphere, uh, it will show the leaves and not inside the sphere. So uh, when I go into here, you see, these are the middle points of the, um, the spheres. So uh, the collection comes in. I take the relative position of the separate uh, spheres. Then I say instances. So these instances should uh, go to points. So I make them just into points. And then here by sample index, I get the instance scale. So the X, Y, Z scale of the spheres of the different indices. And then I project them to the scale of the instances of these spheres. 
that I just created which are filled. So if I plug this in, this is actually what is happening. It's like a, a sphere filled with all kinds of edges and vertices to be able to get the geometry proximity of them. And then uh, put the result to the group output. So if we go here, uh, the instances are realized. So they become real, all this geometry. And then I get the, the distance from all these points. And this way, uh, by remapping some of the values, you can say it should be uh, bigger inside. The leaf should be bigger inside and smaller outside. So if I delete this, then here you see what the end result is. So going into here, because the sphere that I recreated is filled, it also puts leaves inside of the sphere. So I can also uh, change that and show you what happens. If I get into the proximity fall off and I just take the sphere, uh, plug it into instances. Here you see that inside the sphere, the instances disappear. So it's only at the edge of the sphere where the geometry is it will know that it's close and it creates these leaves but that's generally not what i want i want to have like also inside my sphere all this geometry that it notices that it's close to so this way it works much better uh, so if we go into this mode you see how i created it all the uh, nodes that I used and also the values. These values fall off minus max. You can see here 0 0.5, 1 and 0. You can tweak that. I also put some uh, very basic materials on this tree. And uh, here I view just the instances. I combine also the tree mesh with the leaves here. So if I turn this off. You see the whole thing and uh, this way uh, you can really easily put instances on your model and also see what you're doing by just moving the icospheres and changing the scale of these things. So I hope this uh, helps you out by creating instances and uh, generating a falloff and uh, I hope it's useful. <laughs>